and welcome to Walker Tea Review. I'm Jason Walker and we are exploring teas, tasting them together. Uh, like I remind people every once in a while or I have people come and say, you know, how can I experience the tea? A great way is to just uh, look at the upcoming episodes where I've, I've scheduled out the reviews and I've scheduled out most uh, in, in my records, I've scheduled uh, teas up to about the end of uh, 2010. So you'll be able to see teas that are coming up in the next two to three weeks. You can go ahead and order those, have them prepared, get your equipment ready so that you can taste along. Especially if it's if you feel like um, you're not making the, you're not comfortable with the way you're making your tea uh, or your style of making tea. There could be some uh, helpful tips here. And we're going to be looking at a tea, Japanese green. Uh, Japanese greens. Speaking of ways to prepare your tea can sometimes be ch tricky or challenging. Uh, more, they can be less forgiving than some other styles of tea. So, perhaps you will get some uh, tips or some clues today as, we're, as I'm making this tea. So I've got out uh, my basic equipment, just getting out a regular old daily use type teaspoon. Again, you don't necessarily need fancy equipment to uh, prepare a tea. So let's go ahead, and I've got out about, about I'm shaking out just enough. So that's about a flat teaspoon of, of this Japanese green, and I'm going to add that. And that really, this is about a three to four ounce uh, volume of uh, gaiwan, which means with Chinese words for covered bowl. So I'm going to add my water here. Now my water, again, I'll, with Japanese greens, it's often recommended that you use cooler water. So you want to a bring oftentimes you bring your water to close to a boil or a full boil and then allowing it to cool back down some of the ways that you can do that I'll just kind of give an example here you can allow it to transfer between different vessels so for example by pouring it into this pitcher of course that's going to give it a little more time to cool the uh, the glass of the pitcher is going to absorb more of the heat and just by transferring from one to another you are going to be able to lose some of that heat. That wasn't quite enough, so I'm going to add just a pinch more. There we go. And again, allowing it to just kind of swirl around and cool a little bit. That looks good. I'm actually not going to leave it in steeping very long either, so that will help as well. I'm leaving the lid off also. That allows more heat to rise up uh, and allow it to cool faster. These are pretty thin walls, so they're not going to hold a lot of heat. They're going to allow it to dissipate fairly well, too. So, uh, while that's steeping, we're just a few more seconds longer. I do want to kind of talk about this tea. Uh, this is from Mellow Monk. This is the tea company. This is their Shaded Leaf Green Tea. Uh, you can find 100 grams of this tea. Available for $33.95 currently on uh, Mellow Monk's website. That's mellowmonk.com. Uh, this is information about this tea and that you'll find on the website or through information uh, that uh, Mellow Monk has shared with me. This is a kabusa cha, which is a word that means uh, covered. The tea has been covered usually with uh, some kind of, uh, while it's still on the, the plant, on the shrub, the bush, uh, about 21 days before harvest, they put a natural or some kind of woven covering over the, the, the plants, and that uh, stimulates the tea plants to uh, produce uh, more of the catechins and other flavor components of the tea, uh, which makes it, often makes it a richer, deeper green color as well. Uh, we know that this is a Yabukita varietal, which is a... Um, a common or a frequently used uh, uh, tea varietal in Japan. Not necessarily always the choice of senchas though. Okay, so you can get senchas from different varietals. That's it's possible for that. Uh, but what else? This is, the the way that this is grown. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the way this is processed is a tama. Uh, let me see if I can pronounce this correctly. Tamarikucha. Tamarikucha. Uh, which is a process that can be either steamed or pan-fired, from my understanding. It, uh, it gives a curly type of uh, component or at look to the leaves as well. 
not again. My, from my understanding, not all sinches are of that type of uh, tamariku cha. Okay? And other information if you are interested. This is from Kyushu Island. Uh, I have that information. Uh, a lot of teas like this, specifically Kyushu Island, uh, on the Kyushu Island can come from uh, Saga Prefecture. Uh, not necessarily confirmed that this one specifically came only from that area or exclusively from that area. And uh, within the Saga Prefecture, a uh, famous, uh, more well-known area can be the Urashino area, or region of that prefecture. So, we've had enough time to let this uh, steep, and before I go too far, I'm going to pour this now. Now, I've got some leaves that uh, have slipped through, and that's okay, because I'm going to present an option for addressing that. One, well, I'll talk, I'll talk about it later. Before they go too far with this, I do want to give a smell and talk a little bit about the dry leaf here. With the... Um, some sensuous like this one really have that, uh, that uh, sweet, creamy, uh, cream spinach type component. And this one is rich in that. And my, again, my understanding is that that is a result of that, uh, that tamarikyo cha uh, processing that I just mentioned. It tends to give it more of that sweetness. Uh, again, the darker color, the, uh, the kabuse cha, the covered aspect, it can also give it richer uh, aromas in that respect as well. Looking at these leaves, um, these are deep, rich, green-blue in color for the most part. Um, what else? They're, you're getting small, small flecks, some small-ish flecks, I should say, of a, a quarter of an inch or so. Um, what else do I want to talk about? You do get some that are lar longer, larger, and that those do, some of them, several of them do have a curled note or aspect shape to them. So that's, uh, that's there as well. Um, yeah, we can't really, it's hard to tell a lot more or distinguish this tea or how this tea is really going to come out in the cup from those, from the look of the leaf there. So let's kind of move on and talk a little bit about the wet leaf. Should we be able to discuss that a little further in detail now? Again, rich, creamy. Uh, cream spinach type notes. This is a, a sweet vegetable type note. Um, and yet there's something as it cool as it cools off as I noticed in previous steepings, it gets a little it gets a it gets buttery. It gets slightly salty. So think of salted butter with cream spinach. It, it does have it's rich, creamy, vegetable uh, slightly kind of salty smelling as well. So those are the main components. The color has lightened up and I'm going to pull out just a few little sample type flecks here to see that these are, oh, you know, half an inch or so once they've unfurled. Can be up to half an inch or so. Here's one that looks like, you know, nearly a quarter of the full leaf size. So I'm going to set that there. But again, bright green color. Uh, you see a little bit of a stem and or vein piece here and there, but a lot of times that can add to the flavor profile, either positively or negatively, depending on how you enjoy that taste. Uh, the goal is often to get as much of that out of the tea as possible. Okay, so that's, uh, that's sort of our little bits of these delicate, uh, very thin, light, uh, leaves there. Now, for our liquor, I'm going to pour in just a moment so we can get that ready. But for our liquor, I do want to notice that bright, uh, bright green color, fairly um, light, lightly yellow. I mean, and, and it does have, it's a pretty uh, murky, kind of cloudy. There's a lot of uh, components in there, whether those be uh, 
mic, you know, micro pieces, uh, dust-like components of the of the leaf itself, or those are some of the oils that are uh, not yet fully dissolved in the uh, in the liquor, but uh, it's quite it's cloudy. It does kind of have I almost a uh, you know glowing green type uh, aspect look to it. Cream spinach note still coming off, still sweet, vegetal and buttery. Okay, now to uh, prevent those leaves from getting down into our getting into our, our cup here, one of the things you can do is to use a fine mesh filter like that. Uh, um, but at the same time, you if you are looking at the health aspect of this tea. Um, drinking or ingesting more of the pure leaf components can often be beneficial. That's why, for for example, a Japanese matcha, you are ingesting the entire leaf because it's a powdered form. Uh, you're missing some of that by filtering out certain parts. But just as an example, you can filter through, get a nice clear uh, broth that way. But again, there's so much cloudy, there's a cloudy note to this tea meaning that there's a lot of uh, character floating around in this in this leaf, in this liquor. So I don't want to thin it out too much there. Okay. Also by you know by pouring slowly, most of my larger leaf pieces actually stayed in my pitcher anyway. Allowing this tea, or preparing this tea at a cooler temperature really help this tea out. If, when I go through a test run, off-camera tastings, I often use higher uh, temp water temperatures and doing so, and then I want to taste, and then I taste this tea rather at a higher temperature. Uh, uh, but then what, I'm, what I also note here is by using slightly cooler water, allowing your tea to cool more, it's bringing out a bit of a thicker uh, broth and mouthfeel to it. It's bringing out stronger aromas. So this one has a lot of the um, savory, salty aspects to it. Uh, combined with, towards the, more towards the back, you get a vegetable component, um, something like um, snow pea and spinach. So, so those would be the dominant vegetable aspects there. Combine that with a nice salty, salty, uh, a texture that feels kind of buttery. So it's salty, buttery, uh, snow pea, spinach there. So it does give that, that creamy texture. Um, it's not the heaviest of the creamy textures that I've that I've come across. But uh, the astringency level is is very low, quite low. So you're not really battling. Sometimes with teas, if you don't get the right balance, you may have stronger aroma characters uh, characteristics. But yet you have to fight off and just kind of force yourself to ignore some of the astringency. This one is a nice, uh, good balance with the aromas, the textures, the sweetness, the saltiness as well. Really just. Uh, flowing back and forth, transitioning well from the salty towards the front, the sweet towards the back, and aftertaste that still gives that kind of cool, uh, fresh green vegetable with, uh, with a coating on the mouth as well. Not, uh, but not carrying a lot of astringency or bitterness either. So, looking at this tea as a whole, I'm going to give this tea, I'm going to give this tea a, it's pretty high, it's actually quite good, I'm going to give this tea a 91. It gives a lot of uh, flavor, texture, components that are easily uh, uh, recognized and enjoyed. Uh, they, they're sustained, and yet you're not having to fight off astringency uh, uh, towards the back or, or, or really anywhere through the process. So, uh, and take this tea as a you know as a starting point if you really want to get into Japanese greens or want to kind of uh, explore different grades or levels of Japanese greens or styles. Again, varietals. Um, uh, processing styles as well. All these are tell the story and really bring out and really 
I'll explain more about what you get in your cup. So come back and uh, take the next cup with us here at Walker Tea Review.